yes, uh, I'm very excited to uh, present here today. Uh, was uh, humbled by being selected. Um, what I would like to show is a uh, an interface that I created uh, for an online homework system called My Open Math that allows questions to be created using JSX Graph. So um, let me share screen if I can, and I'm just going to show you how it works. Uh, there we go. Okay, so um, I don't have enough time to go into a lot of detail of how my open math works and uh, that sort of thing. So I'm just gonna start kind of where um, JSX graph comes in. But um, my open math, just so you know, is an online homework system for mathematics. Uh, when I first uh, discovered it and ran into it, um, it I blew my mind. It's a, it's a great system, completely open source. Um, students can, as an instructor, you can create classes for free. Students can take the classes for free. They don't have to pay to use the website. Um, all the content, the questions are shared in a database and uh, instructors can create them themselves, share them with other instructors. It's just, it's an amazing resource. Uh, and with the previous years, uh, you know, online being a focus point during the pandemic, uh, it's really been a lifesaver. So um, I have also been uh, using JSX Graph for uh, quite a, a long time. Um, it's a great resource for uh, showing students um, how mathematics works graphically and they can really see stuff in action and interact with it. And I found it's been uh, a great resource. Uh, I took a class with the creator of my open math, uh, David Lippmann, and how to uh, extend the system uh, seeing as it's open source. And uh, I found a way to uh, extend it to include JSX graph. Um, and I think it's been a, a great um, uh, creation here. So um, anyway, I would just like to show it to you. Uh, so in case you might be interested in checking it out sometime. Um, I'm in my open math currently, and I'm just inside the, uh, the uh, question creator. And so I'm just going to make a new question just so I can show you how to you know, do things. Um, the question editor is uh, similar to how a question would be created in most systems. Um, you have uh, first common control, which kind of makes up the randomization, the mathematics and that sort of thing. And then you have the question text, which shows up to screen. So uh, just as a simple example, um, I could say uh, A is uh, a random number from uh, one to five. Um, B is a random number from one to five as well. And then ask the students, what is the sum of A plus B? And then if I preview that question, this is what would show up to the students. So um, very straightforward. Uh, the, the common control, which runs the mathematics behind the scenes is mostly in PHP. Um, you do have to kind of know a little bit of your way around that uh, in order to work with it. But once you get started, it's it's really not bad. It's, it's quite uh, intuitive, I think. And then the uh, question text can be done in um, HTML. So as long as you know HTML and a little bit of PHP and mostly just mathematics, you can uh, create questions here. OK, so um, my library that I created, you have to load in here, so load library JSX graph. Uh, and if those any of you are familiar with uh, my open math, um, you may know that there already was a library called uh, for JSX graph called JSXG. And that was created by a gentleman named Grant Sandler a few years prior to mine. And it's a great library and I actually based mine off of his. But the one thing that I felt was missing is the ability for objects that you create to interact with one another. And I think that that's one of the most powerful features of JSX Graph. 
All right, so uh, that will load the library. And just like when you're creating any kind of a uh, JSX graph construction using JavaScript, uh, the first thing you have to do is make a board. So uh, we'll just start off, we'll say board equals JSX board. And uh, you tell it what type. And so the types that I've created that you can do here are uh, rectangular. Uh, you could also do polar or geometry. Um, the syntax is slightly different than uh, you would run into in JSX graph. And that's just the way that I had to kind of tailor the code for the PHP in this system so that um, it could create the correct code in JavaScript behind the scenes for you. So um, then let's see, I will just display that board. All right. And oops, what did I do wrong? <laughs> Oh, I misspelled library. That's the problem. Uh, there we are. So yeah, we have a uh, JSX board. Um, you can zoom and pan with it, uh, but just your basic um, rectangular board. Uh, you can, one of the main features of JSX graph is the ability to uh, change things to your own needs. Uh, and I've definitely built that in as well. Uh, you can pass different options. Um, you pass them as a PHP array. So for instance, if you wanna change the size of the board, uh, you just pass it to coordinates and that will change the size of the board drawn. Uh, you can also change the bounds if you like. So the bounds here. I'll just make from say negative 10 to positive 10 on the X, negative 10 to positive 10 on the Y. So you have all the, uh, oh, I was like, wait, it didn't change anything. It automatic, it made the scale uh, to two, that's okay. Um, but it is from negative 10 to positive 10. And so you have the ability to change uh, anything to your liking, uh, just like you do uh, if you're working with JSX graph uh, in general. Now, if you um, want to create things to put on the board, um, that's just as easy as well. Let's uh, start with a point. All right, so I'll say A is a JSX point. Now, when you're working with JSX graph in JavaScript, you would say board.create and then tell it that you're making a point. Um, here, what you do is just, you call the function JSX point and you give board as the first input to the board that you just created, and you give the coordinates of where you want it to be. So let's just put it at four, five. And it will make a point for you and you can move it around, you can interact with it. Uh, and the really great thing uh, down here, you'll see this is the answer box. And when the student is fed the question, generally uh, they would make some sort of calculation um, like previously I said, what's the sum of these two numbers? So they would add those two numbers together and enter the answer. What it's set up to do here is you can pass it uh, the location of the answer box. So we'll just say answer box from this question. And uh, the, this value right here is just the number of the question uh, when it's inserted in an assignment. So it can find the answer box through this. So what it will do when you move this point now, it'll insert the coordinates there. So you could say, for instance, um, let's see, I'll set the, oh, I need to change this to an end tuple, which there's lots of different types of questions you can use in my open math. Uh, number is just a simple numeric answer. N tuple is like a coordinate pair, something of that sort. So I will say the answer is three, two. And, and let's do this. So I will say, move the point to three, two. And I'm just wrapping these in paragraph tabs tags just for uh, 
you know, it shows up nicely on screen. Okay, and that should do it. It might be a little bit difficult because the point can be at different decimal values. So um, some other types of things that you can control with the point. Um, uh, I believe I called this X, or did I call it snap size X or X snap size? Let me double check my notes here real quick. I apologize. Uh, so for the point X snap size. Okay, so X snap size, I'll set that to one and same for the Y. And these are very similar to the attributes that you can send to JSX objects uh, through um, uh, JavaScript object notation. And in fact, what the what the function here does is it takes the elements in this array and it basically transforms it into a, a JSON object and passes it into the JavaScript, which makes the code work. All right, so uh, now I'm just moving the point to, uh, what did I say, three, two? So three, two. All right, I'm at that location. Now, if I submit the question as the student, uh, it is uh, that's the correct location, so it's marked me correct. If I moved it at a different place, then it would have been marked incorrect. So uh, you can get the questions to grade uh, based off of constructions, which is great because then you have a lot of different types of visual questions that you can make for students. Uh, like for instance, if you made another point, let me just copy this one. And I'll call it B. And let's say I make a line. So that would be a JSX line. I want to put it on my board. And then it starts. Uh, and it needs two points that are on the line to create it. So here I can just call the previous points that I've made, and it will know the coordinates of that and draw a line through it. Um, let me make the line a little different color. So let's say the color of the line is blue. And now perhaps I make the question to say, uh, make a line with slope two and y intercept uh, five. Okay. All right. And it's not going to grade it. I didn't set it up with an answer, but you can see here now I have two points that I can move around, uh, put the Y intercept where it's supposed to go. And then I can move the other point so that the slope is, what did I say, two? All right, so up two over one. Oh, it doesn't want two. Uh, my mouse on uh, the Macintosh, um, it's very sensitive. Anyway, um, so you can move it and uh, you know create your line through the two points, and then you can set it up to grade that way. But um, there's all kinds of constructions that I've included here. Uh, you know, with lines, I also have segments, rays, and vectors that you can draw on screen. Um, functions as well. Um, let's draw a. <laughs> function here. So let's see if I let's change my line. Okay. Function board and I'll just make one by default here. So x minus two times x minus or x plus one, something like that. OK, so it will draw the function. But if I want to be able to interact with the function through points and things, um, I can still do that. So uh, let's say I want it to go through the x coordinate of point A. Right. So x minus ax. Oh, you know, it might be having, let's do that. 
okay, yes. It was having trouble determining which point was which because I had them pointed at the same place. Okay, so uh, you can interact with the graphs that way. Uh, let's, let me do another one that makes a little more sense. One second, let's make a slider. Okay, sliders are uh, very useful in, um, uh, in most constructions. So let's make a slider here. And uh, the slider, it needs uh, a minimum. So I'll just go like negative five to five and a step of one. And I'll make this, let me make sure I have everything set just right. And X minus the A, yes, the coordinate of the slider. All right. Okay, so we should always have a point at negative one, so that's there. And then as I move the slider value, uh, it changes the other coordinate of the uh, parabola, the other X intercept of the parabola to whatever the slider value is. Um, so we can interact with uh, functions that way. Um, and I've seen a lot of uh, folks create questions based off of things like this, where uh, they might show a sine curve and ask students to change sliders so that you get the correct amplitude and period changes to match uh, you know, a, a randomly chosen sine curve and then grade based off of, you know, did with the sliders, did they make the correct uh, changes to um, go along with that? Um, I certainly didn't include everything possible with JSX graph because uh, it's what you can do with it is is limitless. But I tried to include as much functionality as I possibly could. Um, another thing is for uh, let's see. Um, I'll leave my function here, but let me make it constant. X minus two, and we'll just put that upside down. And all right, let's do, we'll make an integral. And uh, the integral, um, what we need to pass is the start and end points of the integral. So let's do, uh, say, but let me make this from one to five. And then I'll go from zero to the value of the slider and base that off of function f. And then that should display the integral. Uh, let's, let's see here. Um, Okay, perhaps that shouldn't have been in a separate set of, let's try that. Well, um, range, I have two inputs. Uh, I don't know why it's telling me that's not the correct uh, input. Uh, let me check on one thing here. That's actually, I tell you what, instead of just making questions, I'll show you some that have been created already and then uh, show you how those are constructed. Okay, so uh, this one, oh, uh, the one at the one above. Okay, so this one uses an integral and um, you can see the integral right here. It's doing the integral of the normal distribution curve uh, so that this way, the students can actually have like a little normal distribution calculator. And so uh, it draws the curve uh, that makes the uh, normal distribution curve and 
it uses the integral function to draw the integral and actually calculate the value of the integral, displaying the probability to the students. So uh, like I said, I'm not sure what I was doing incorrectly um, with my syntax on the previous example I was showing, but this is, uh, you know, shows that it's uh, working as expected here. Um, and there's been a lot of instructors that have taken to the library and making questions based off of this. Uh, if you look at the list of questions, uh, I generally ask uh, instructors to, you know, uh, put the tag JSX in them, just so, uh, you know, anybody who's looking for an interactive uh, style question, they can find them easy. Uh, but lots of instructors have taken to the library and created in questions with them. Um, and there's lots of different kinds that you can do. Uh, I have sort by ID because I have a couple of a couple that I would like to show here. Ah, here we are. Um, this one, uh, it uses polygons and it gives you a frequency distribution and asks you to create a histogram. And uh, all you have to do to create the histogram is just move the bars up and down based off the location of these points. So uh, let me do the frequencies just a moment here, 13, 15, uh, 14, and 11. And then if the student then puts the histogram bars at the correct heights, they can be graded as to whether they at least are connecting the ideas of the height of the frequency uh, with the shape of the histogram. Uh, this next one, six, eight, eight. Here we are. Uh, there's uh, one person who's been doing a lot of work with making uh, geometry style questions for students that are interactive. And so this one is uh, looking at the you know, relationships between uh, inscribed angles, major arcs, minor arcs, and uh, you know, those sorts of things. Um, so um, a lot of geometric style questions have been created. Uh, in fact, uh, the th this author right here has really um, uh, excelled at creating a ton of questions based off of the library for geometry. Um, and I think I'll do uh, maybe one more, let me, six, four, seven. Uh, yes, so this one uses uh, a glider and uh, a tangent line. So, um, uh, it asks the students to uh, slide the glider on the graph until they find a slope of negative one. And when they find that slope of negative one, uh, then they're to uh, insert the uh, X location of where that's happened. So uh, connects the ideas of uh, tangent lines, what tangent lines look like at different points, what those slopes are, and then um, but still gives them the ability to interact with a figure and see what they're working with. Okay, um, I, I think that's everything I'd like to show.